Hello everyone, this is Dr. Balgwin, your proud superintendent of schools, and I would like to welcome you to Voices of Volusia. We have three very special guests today. We have Ms. Wessler, Jen Wessler. Not only is she the PTA president, but in addition to that, you've got a fifth grader that, that attends Coronado, and I think yep. I met your, your child you at did. Coronado. You have a sixth grader at New Smyrna Beach yep. Middle School, and I met, I met yep. your sixth grader as well. We have Ms. Stephanie Philway, Right? Am I saying? Philia. Philia. Phil Philia. Philia. Mm -hmm. I like that. Philia. <laughs> um, you have a fifth grader at DeBerry. I do. Right? And you have a seventh grader at River Springs Middle School. And our wonderful pastor that's here. <laughs> and I, I was sharing with him during break that my dad was a pastor. So I have a lot of respect for pastors. So Pastor Dan... You have an 11th grader at Deland High School, mm -hmm. and then you have a 6th grader at Florida Virtual School. That's right. Right? So we've got the whole gamut right here, elementary, <laughs> middle, high, and then also Volusia Online, as you know. So, Ms. Westler, how about we start with you? Um, tell us a little bit. You know that it's really important in the educational system that you provide ample of opportunities to students, right? Mm -hmm. And you have your, your students, you know, attending Coronado mm -hmm. and so forth. Tell us a little bit about some of the involvement or experiences they've been a part of that you feel that's truly phenomenal or that you think that every child should be able to experience? So we are very blessed at Coronado. We have all kinds of opportunities and I have boys that are very different, okay? Mm -hmm. So it is yin and yang. I met both so of yes, them, yeah. Very different yeah. children. And my oldest is very artistic and about music and performances. Mm -hmm. So he's been able to be on the news crew at his school. Wow. You know, every morning he got to, you know, say the news and, and he would have a puppet show about lunch and he loved that get to also participate in the all county music performance wow. which is where they bring all the fifth graders oh, yes. you know, from different schools that's a big deal it was a huge deal he loved it they had like the red carpet and he <laughs> felt like a million bucks and it was oh. great and then and, and he's done plenty of other things we found out he's done running club and he's not a runner uh, but he had the opportunity to figure out that now before i paid big bucks on a sport later <laughs> so i love it that uh -huh. um, but then we had my next son jackson who is my academic all-star yeah. he wants to be first at everything so competing was important to him and he did the news crew and he's done safety patrol because he liked you know mm -hmm. having that kind of power of mm -hmm. showing everyone around <laughs> but the biggest thing he did that was amazing that we're in the thick of right now is this club called beta club mm -hmm. and it's basically like national junior honor society where it's based on academics and volunteerism but also as competition in academic fields mm -hmm. and this club as we're talking nine, 10, 11 year olds. Yeah. Went and competed in Orlando and we won somewhere around like 20 different awards, mm -hmm. these kids. Mm -hmm. I had the opportunity of meeting the wonderful teacher yes, there. Slipper. Yes, that really put together this whole She's idea. Amazing. I will say, I got to give it to our school staff that they really they hone in on what these kids are good at and they offer them those opportunities but the key is how you leverage yes. as a parent do you understand the opportunities that are out there and how do you leverage that for right. your for your child so and and tell me a little bit about the teachers and staff i know you love your teach your teachers you love your They're teachers amazing. and the staff but how have they been able to meet the needs and i think you kind of detailed that a little bit for us but what does that involvement engagement looks like so our teachers at our, our environment is really good at kind of finding out where kids are struggling and you know what they're really good at and they really like to promote the things that they're good at so they can get involved if it's arts and they're showing it off in art art houses and galleries um, but really our teachers got even more hands-on than that you know my son Jackson my academic major in first grade they they said there's something about this kid and they tested him for gifted and sure enough you know his IQ was out of the ballpark and they began we had the opportunity to switch schools if we wanted to we chose not to because we loved our environment and teachers really kind of home the classroom time in on Jackson understanding that hey this child if he's done earlier here are things we can do he just needs his brain to be pushed I love that making yeah. those accommodations it was great you and you do know that we have we're opening up a whole lot more part-time gift 
I hear right? and we are very excited. It's just for that, it, for yep. what you just shared, yep. you know, sometimes you may love your school so much you or it's more regulate. convenient, right? Or you don't want your child traveling extra. Mm -hmm. So having those opportunities there at the school and we have been embarking upon that journey. Yes. So Ms. Philia, tell us a little bit about the specialized programs and classes in which your, your children are part of and how that has that, those experiences shaped their minds? I would say academically, socially, emotionally. What are your thoughts on that? So at River Springs, my daughter participates in an advanced, like an accelerated um, course load. And so right now it's really exciting. She's very excited. She's in Algebra One, and she'll be in Geometry next year. So she's earning high school credit mm -hmm. now. And I think uh, your question was, how does it shape them academically? She's not a sports uh, person, but academically she's competing on that level. And the expectations in her honors classes carry over in her other classes. Yeah. You know, she's working just as hard in her other classes. Another thing that I love that she's uh, involved in is the culinary program. Yeah. So in sixth grade, she was in culinary and loved it. In seventh grade, she was in culinary and loved it. And that set herself up to be in a full-time eighth grade program next year. So she's really excited about it. And I really think that our schools do a great job of offering um, something for everyone, kind of like what Jen said. And it goes back, you know, if you look at the multiple intelligences, you know where your strengths are. And, base, and if we can take where students or where our children's strengths are and really create opportunities, right, where they can leverage that. So not only are you hooking or engaging that student, but also the learning is so pertinent. We have about 97 programs slash academies in our district, and we're opening more and we're having more pathways that we're starting, really full pathways that are we're starting in our middle schools. And again, it's, it's important to create to have those opportunities because we know of the multiple intelligences. We all have intelligence or strengths in different areas and that's quite okay, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's again how you leverage. That's what makes our community a great community, but it's, it's enriching, right? Yeah. Um, so tell us now, we're gonna go to pastor, okay? And I know that with, with your children that are in high school, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much, and those, the one, you have a child that now in ninth grade, correct? I have or a child in, in 11th and I have a child in sixth. Six. So a little bit of both, yeah. A little bit of both. Tell us a little bit about life after high school, see, uh, through these programs. Sure. How do you think that it's shaping the, your students now or your children yeah. now for their life after high school? Yeah. Well, I, I'll be able to tell you that really in a couple of years, uh, probably best. But um, at the same time, I, I do think that there's a great deal of preparation that has already been made. Um, so my son is involved in the engineering program at Deland High, and that has been really good for him. That's been uh, that's been a challenge for him. It's been a place of application. He feels like he's really kind of feeling out whether or not that is uh, a college education path or a career path. And so we're excited about that, about him being able to be able to test that out without having be having to be uh, on the college campus and potentially going down the, the the path of a major and having to do changes there. He's also very involved in the band, and so we know that that's a that's a great connection point uh, at the next level of education. It's been a great connection point for him at the uh, high school level. We're excited about that. He's also taken advantage of dual enrollment opportunities. And so um, he's on path right now to graduate with his AA um, during his senior year. So he will, he will be able to graduate with really two years of college already behind him uh, in his education. So I have we're to just tell really you, that wasn't that. afforded to me when I was. <laughs> oh, it wasn't me either. <laughs> it wasn't that me is either. absolutely amazing. Yeah. And, and you know, I have an assistant superintendent for high school. He likes to say, why can't we create the experiences where our children have the opportunity to get the steak and the lobster both on the plate at the same right. time. So basically it's it's about these opportunities, right, where you can mm -hmm. finish high school, walk across the stage yeah. with an associates and at the same time have certification right. in other, because I will always say that, you know, when we were growing up, we pretty much 
studied and we landed a job and for most of us we stayed in that job for 30 35 years but with our generation now it's really it's imperative that we provide them with these diversified experiences and certifications so that they will have multiple multiple opportunities because really com competition now is now within four walls Right. It's it's boundaryless. Yeah. So, what advice do you have for a parent that may have a ninth grader now? Yeah, uh, high school. Uh, this and, and you've you've just mentioned it. High school is very different from when I was in high school. Mm -hmm, it is mm -hmm. the the opportunities of education and different programs, uh, different paths. It, it it's just it's it's vast. It's yeah. like when I went to college. There yeah. were so many different paths. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I would say is um, two things. Number one, have a friend, yeah. somebody that's ahead of you, somebody. Yeah that you can say, how did you navigate these particular um, situations and, and how did you deal with the, you know, kind of helping your child p choose a good path yeah. uh, in high school? Because they, they're ahead of you. They've, they've maybe run into some things that they, that they have learned from mm -hmm. and so being able to do that. And then the other thing that I would just say is, as a parent, uh, talk to your child about being involved in something. Mm -hmm. um, high school can be a really huge campus and yeah. you can get really lost there, yeah. but being involved in something smaller, like yeah. an academy, like a, a, an extracurricular activity, like an athletic opportunity, those are ways to get involved and to feel like you have a place mm -hmm. on that campus rather than just you know one in a long line or a sea of faces. You're absolutely, you know what, that's so key what you just said because that was the exact statement that was made to me by a group of students at Seabreeze High School because they're part of an academy there and uh, actually the culinary program. They're mm -hmm. part of the culinary program and, and another academy. So I was talking to this group of students and they said, Dr. Baldwin, what we love you know, besides the learning piece and the certification, is that we have an opportunity to really work to get to know a group of students that shares similar interests, similar values. And they said to the point that if we have a problem, sometimes we don't go to the counselor. We would sit among each other, we, we listen to each other and give each other advice. And I said, wow, that is just so powerful. Yeah. That is so powerful. It's like a network, right, within a, a, a much larger network because you're right. Uh, high schools are pretty large. We have some high schools with 3,000 students, and it's important to find that. Um, and obviously, I would say that if your child is getting it starting ninth grade for next year, where the youth science survey is one of those surveys that's aptitude and interest at the same time. And your child will be participating in that survey, and we look at the data, and we will have conversation with our counselors, we'll have conversation with the, with the learner, with the student, and with the parent, so that we can help carve out that pathway or opportunities that will be available for that, for that student. So with that said, I'll, I'll tell you what, I really enjoy this segment and I can do four more with you guys. It, it's so phenomenal to have a group of parents here in Volusia County that truly believes in what you do and they're investing in the work and we couldn't have done it without you guys. And again, if you haven't ch had not chosen our organization to be one of that of service, then we wouldn't be here. So thank you again for choosing Volusia County, but also for, for being an engaged parent. We truly appreciate you. I wanted to ask, are there any questions for me? Yes. Or any advice? I do have a piece of advice. Go for it. So I think that middle school is a huge transition, regardless of who your child is, and I would really urge every parent to become involved, mm -hmm. to, to speak directly to your child's teachers yeah. and directly to your child's administrators, get to know them, show your face on campus. It's not elementary school, it's not as easy, it's not as organic. You have to make a way for yourself, mm -hmm. but it is, it's priceless, do it. Absolutely, and I will add to that, let's not forget what age span is middle school, right? Yeah. What in yeah. age span it encompasses. It. So it's important that, that you as a parent you're more engaged than ever. Absolutely. Please be more engaged than ever. And I know usually if you have a student that's starting pre-K or uh, kindergarten, you be, you're very engaged at those ages. But I will tell you, you need to be as engaged when your child starts or your, your uh, student starts in middle school. And from our end, we will we'll capitalize on that engagement and really try to provide the best opportunities for your, for your child. So again, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today. I look forward to talking with you again on the next episode of Voices of Evolution. <laughs>